so with Hive Science, uh, a lot of times I read science articles or uh, new new reports, new findings, uh, new studies. Or sometimes I'll do older stuff and just teach you always about something cool with with science, especially when it comes to uh, insect science. But today I decided to do something a little different uh, because I'm not the only one out here promoting science and putting science uh, out into the world and trying to get people to a little bit interested in it. I also uh, interact on Facebook a lot and there's other people out there, you know, that, that, that'll promote science as well. But let's just take a second though, because they're not always promoting the best science. <laughs> they're not always promoting real science and sometimes they're promoting some weird science. Let's start with this one right here. If Jesus isn't real, how did the sun know to get up an hour later today, ending daylight savings time, and thereby teaching the solar industry a valuable lesson? You can't explain that. This is Pauline Hansen, uh, TV Week on 420. Yeah, uh, so the Jesus tells the sun to get up an hour earlier, an hour later, depending on what daylight savings time, but only in certain states and the rest of the world. Uh, there's no daylight savings time. Only in the United States does Jesus take this extra step to make sure that the sun is behaving accordingly uh, to how the farmers need need him to to be able to get up and harvest the crops. Okay. Um, this, and again, these aren't all creationist or anything. It's just it's something funny I found. It's uh, dog images on the top. It, it, and I'm going to put a lot of these science charts and stuff up here that don't have any context just to be just to be silly. So, yeah, there's some there's some dogs compared to other mammals. On theme. Something you may not know, today is the only day of the year that you can stand an egg on end. Why? It is due to the equilibrium. No, it doesn't work in the fall. I tried. Here are some pictures to show. It takes patience. The earlier you do it, you do this before noon, the easier it is to do. See for yourself and enjoy. I wonder how many people looked at this Facebook post and said, yes, you, you can't stand an egg on its end during uh, the equinox because apparently the balance of day and night, that balance is important to, uh, to the balance of gravity too. Uh, I'm not sure, but... Yeah, seeing an egg on end during the equinox is, is not a thing, unfortunately. I've, I've tried it before. We did this back when I was into woo <laughs> and tried and tried and we couldn't get it to, to work. Someone else wants to disagree with me or try to present some kind of case and some kind of uh, uh, model as to why it would work that way because equinox, the equilibrium there, it means the balance between the day and night. There's the same hour, same number of hours in the day as in the night. It's nothing to do with, with gravity, um, which is a weird flex. Mount Athos. Bees have returned to this old temple. Uh, temple began to hive on the icons, but they did not hide the faces of the sacred images. Each image radiates frequent. Each image radiates a frequency. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to press X to doubt on that one. Uh, I don't know if they, they just didn't cover the faces, though. This, uh, the one on the left here, looks very much like the uh, the B con construction has been peeled back to reveal the iconic figure. The other ones don't uh, don't don't have the uh, the peeled part, but you know if one of them looks like that, there's a good chance the other ones may too. Yeah. All right, and let's see here. Copper pyramid bed, two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars for this pyramid to go over your bed. This is a copper pyramid around the bed. This protects from five G radiation, preserves the body from aging, and creates a force field to protect you from microwaves. Create a peaceful meditative environment in the bedroom. And also looks really cool. Super. It doesn't say super. It says supper rare to find and cost me a lot to build and mend it together to create the perfect pyramid shape. So yeah, that you put copper uh, 
copper tubing and a pyramid about behind your bed apparently uh, it protects you from 5g who knew who knew you once saw a dialogue between Sigart and pz myers in a comment section pretty interesting Sai doesn't have pz's wisdom yeah i've had uh, i've had up and down experiences with Sigart um for the most part there's been there's been a, we have had a uh, negative interaction but most most of our interactions have been positive Size comparison of an adult parasitoid wasp M. emolophitanum and the largest uh, Thio margarita nebiensis bacteria, the largest known species of bacteria. They can grow up to 0.75 millimeters in size and can be visible to the naked eye. Just a yeah, comparison of the smallest insect to the largest bacteria. Pretty cool. Here we go. Uh, weird, weird diagram. No context on this one at all. We have gluteus maximus and gluteus uh, medius, and we have fish and fish diagram with a mouse on it. I don't know what's going on in this science chart. I don't know what they're going to do with that fish. Uh, I'm concerned. I'm a little bit concerned about what I'm seeing on the screen here. Oh, UFOs are the chariots of God. Of God. Oh boy. Isaiah chapter 31, 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord's host defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. UFOs. Ze Zechariah chapter 5, 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. A flying roll. Hmm. I don't know what that even means, a flying roll. I hope so too, Vandalia. I look forward to your your conversations. They're always fun. Uh, and he said unto me, What see thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits. And the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. So cubits, um, yeah, and that's the about the length from the elbow to the like it's the tip of the fingers to the elbow is, is about a cubit. I don't know how long that rough translation uh, is, but that's roughly how big it's supposed to be. Um, then we have Jeremiah. Hey, Jeremiah keeps making some appearances on my show here lately. Chapter four: Behold, he shall come up as clouds and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind his horses are swifter than eagles woe unto us for we are spoiled so god has horses apparently horses that pull his chariot through the sky this is uh cheer to the gods i guess uh, uh right at face value second kings chapter two and it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of five and a horse on, of fire, a chariot of fire, sorry, the text is a little small, chariot of fire and a horse of fire, and parted them both unsundered. And Elijah went up to by a whirlwind into heaven. And tw uh, Kings, Second Kings, uh, chapter 2 12 and elijah saw it and he cried my father my father the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more oh, there's a missing one i don't know which one was there but we'll just keep moving through moving forward this is interesting a group of a group pulled forty thousand people ages 8 to 80 they wanted to see how they were engaging with scripture. When they engage with the Bible zero to three times a week, they found negligible effects on their lives. But when they engaged four times in a week, the effects spiked in an astounding way. The stunning findings included the following. Feeling lonely dropped 30%. Anger issues dropped 32%. Bitterness in relationships dropped 40 percent alcoholism dropped 57 percent sex outside of marriage dropped 68 percent 
Feeling spiritually stagnant dropped 60%. Viewing pornography dropped 61%. Sharing your faith jumped 200%. Disciplining others jumped 230%. Okay, so let's look at these numbers here and just kind of, I'm just, I'm just going to take them on face value. I'm not going to look up the statics or statistics on it just to say why would these things happen. So when you are indoctrinated into a religion, uh, the tendency is to have a to promote a positive message of that religion, especially when you're new on it and you still get that euphoria feeling. It is uh, not unexpected that people would uh, largely feel less lonely as they've become part of a church um, or became part of a religious community. Have anger issues drop because you're in that euphoric state. Bitterness in relationships drop. Um, I don't know about that. Alcoholism dropping, I don't know if I, again, these these statistics, uh, I'm just going to take them at face value. Um, so take that what it is. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Sex outside of marriage is dropping. I can definitely see that uh, due to the sexual repression of religion and uh, due to the uh, shame culture that, that surrounds that. And uh, especially the way that they uh, treat women who are uh, who are who are or trying to be sexually active um feeling spiritually stagnant drops uh, no doubt no doubt at all that, that happens viewing pornography drops 61 percent again we have the shame cycle plus the bible has its own pornography uh built into it uh i think what was it ezekiel um she lusted after her lovers <laughs> yeah that that verse i'm not going to read the whole thing or quote the whole thing but yeah there's pornography in the bible so you don't need to uh, have external pornography because you got it right there in the scriptures. Sharing your faith jumps 200%. No doubt. No doubt at all that that's going to be what happens. Disciplining others jump 230%. Oh, yes, because once you're up on that uh, religious high horse, you're in a position where you can start telling other people how they should be living their lives. So, yeah, I definitely see that... Uh, being religious will increase your ability to think that you're in a position to tell other people uh, how to live their lives um, and, and disciplining them and telling them what they should and shouldn't be doing. I, I don't doubt it. All right. Figure two, one. Is this Finch evolving? Um, everything's evolving. Uh, all organisms are evolving from their parents. The, the differences being what they are, they may be negligible, they may be applicable, but yeah, every everything, uh, you are a, a mutant of your parents before you. <laughs> if you blend uh, all 7.8 billion people on the earth into a fine goo, density of a human is 985 uh, kilograms per uh, cubic meter. Average human body mass is 62 kilograms. You would end up with a sphere of human goo just under one kilometer wide. I made a visualization of how this would look in the middle of Central Park, New York. <laughs> Yeah, the pornography in the Bible gets pretty, pretty frisky, and uh, it's not always uh, uh, consensual either. So, look at uh, look at King David. He was he was rapey. Our chocolate is infused with a 528 hertz healing sound frequency to raise your vibe. They're vibe. They're they're making sound frequencies. Uh, chocolate with sound frequencies <laughs> infused in them now. Oh boy, talk about some woo. You cannot uh, infuse sound frequencies in chocolate. I'm sorry. But well, uh, speaking of sound frequencies, I got something coming up about that soon too. So keep uh, keep your eye on the hive if that's something that interests you. This is the one. This is the one that made me decide that I was going to do this shit to sh today because listen. <clears throat> I'm going to take a drink of my coffee before I read this cuz it's a it's going to be a mouthful. here we go all right brace yourself there was a comprehensive study done recently on why some males have a fear of weapons despite weapons being part of life since the first man picked up a stick or rock over 700,000 years ago Male fondness for weapons should be largely embedded in their DNA and yet some males show a distaste and fear towards these objects 
What they found was that males today who fear weapons lack the MAOA and CDH13 segments of their DNA, which are also given the moniker warrior gene. Scientists have come to the conclusion that males who hate weapons are descendant from berry pickers. <laughs> Weak and effeminate males who lack the strength and mental capacity to do battle with other with uh, to do battle were often lambasted by their tribe and sent to pick berries and other wild fruits alongside the women of the tribe. They also gave or were given menial jobs just taking care of children while the real men went off to do battle. Whoa, isn't that amazing? That's that this week. This is the most phenomenal woo post that I've ever read. <laughs> Not as I've ever read that I read this week. I read a lot of woo posts. So um, we have come a long way since following our basal instincts of uh, picking up weapons and, and using them to kill each other. <laughs> I don't know why that's a virtue to do battle with other humans. We should be trying to build a society where we don't do battle with other humans and that we all help support other humans. I don't know if it's a it's a feminine not to commit murder, I guess, which is uh, fine if that's the way you feel about it. But I don't think that you are the the better m males to uh, propagate in society. But the good thing is, is off while you while you guys are off running around uh, poking uh, animals with sticks, the effeminate males, which, you know, maybe I would have been one of in Neolithic time, um, are back at home with your ladies uh and they're spending time with them and talking to them and <laughs> getting to know them and helping them take care of those menial tasks like raising the next generation to uh help provide for you they're also these but these males these berry pickers are also you know they're participating in uh in private time with your ladies as well while you're running around those uh Ladies in the tribe are, you know, looking for some kind of uh, uh, male support. Who's going to be there? The berry pickers, I guess. Uh, and effeminate men, uh, you know, they talk about us not having warrior genes, which is total BS. <laughs> but um, regardless, not having a... Have you seen the choreography that uh, that is <laughs> produced by these effeminate men? Uh, you don't think that they have... Uh, the capacity for combat it's that maybe using your using something other other sort of skills to uh to help uh, uh engage with your enemies other than just hitting them with rocks is maybe something we should strive for remember the opening ceremony of the london 2012 olympics where the giant figure of death holding a needle the nurses dancing and all the children's in hospital beds it's starting to make a lot of sense now they had this plan for a long time yes and part of the masquerade part of the uh the misinformation campaign that they're doing is to do a huge public display about it uh what eight years before beforehand that that's the goal that's what they want to do and that's why they have so many descendants now he was staying behind, getting busy with all the women, right? He was like the Latin lover guy, this berry picker. Um, it's very sexy. I would have uh, probably snuggled him. <laughs> the vagina produces a thick chemical fluid known as copulin that has actually, that has actual mind control effects on the male brain. <laughs> if a male is exposed to a woman's copulins, over time, she will be able to change, remove, or insert memories. Tell the male what to what he sees, hears, and feels, smells, tastes, tastes, inserts subconscious thoughts that will surface as his own ideas or behaviors later. Plant trigger words or actions that can cause thoughts, actions or sensations in the mail at a later date, days, weeks, even months. The melanated woman 
copulans have multi-functions and are capable of doing other things. Is Dr. Ben still with us? Because I need to know more about these uh, <laughs> copulin fluids. This thick chemical fluid, apparently, <laughs> that, that gives women the power of mind control. All right, here is uh, some of the structures of different vertebrates. Uh, got some snakes and birds and just it, it looks like this is diapsids for the most part so we have uh lapid no there's there's the synapsid here there's a mouse there's a mouse right there um but yeah this is just which part of their bodies are are sacral and cervical uh and thoracic lumbar and caudal so just i uh, thought, thought this was an interesting wanted to share it with you guys all right my favorite thing in wildlife research is the concept of animals being trap happy, meaning the same animal goes into a trap on purpose again and again after it's caught the first time because it was like, hey, there was food in there and zero pred predators and they just let me go in the morning. On one hand, it's fucked up. It fucks up our data, but on the other hand, I get you funky little rodent. If I were, if it were pouring rain on my walk home from work at night and I found a big metal box full of pizza in a bed where no one else could bother me and the only condition is that in the cold light of day I'd be faced with a bunch of scientists weighing me and letting me go on the sidewalk, I'd probably end up in there quite a lot. I don't know if I would. I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd like being poked and prodded by scientists. <laughs> Uh, every morning, but uh, maybe on some in some occasions, at least it'd be a nice place to know that you have this refuge that you can go to if things get tough. If you can't find something to eat, hey, I know where there's a box that has food in it all the time. If I go in there, lock me in there for the night, and there'll be no predators, no risk, and I will uh, be able to eat and then take a nap, and they'll let me out in the morning. Did anyone know anything about tree beam portals? I hugged a 2,000-year-old uh, cypress tree, and this incredible light appeared, 100% authentic, unedited, and I need to see anything, and I've never seen anything like it. I am hoping to learn more about what it is, what its relationship is to the incredible ancient tree. So this is the result of light refraction and long exposure time. Long exposure time does some crazy stuff with light because the light, although your eye doesn't see every spectrum of it, the, the light actually gets uh, fractal in uh, our lower atmosphere due to atmospheric contamination and disperses, in this case, the blue light out from the rest of the, uh, the light waves and uh, gives us this nice little uh, anomaly on the picture. So, yeah. All right. Nigerian grad student uses magnets to prove gay marriage is wrong. An award-winning student at the University of Lagos is claiming that he has disproved gay marriage through science and he used the power of magnets to do so. His groundbreaking work is backed by the university. Imlaha says his experiment shows that the north and south poles of magnets are attracted to each other, but same poles repel each other. Astoundingly, this means that man cannot attract another man because they are the same, and a woman should not attract a woman because they are the same. This is how I used physics to prove gay marriage is wrong, because humans are like magnets you know you you, you can't control it you, you see someone of the opposite sect you just cling to them you just whoosh, seal right together just like some magnets right that's how it happens that's how relationships work right all right so that was uh that was our uh hive science today looking at some what i call used to call these memes from the dark side where i look at some some silly memes and stuff but Thank you so much for, for joining me in the hive today. I really appreciate all the friendly faces and, uh, and friends that are out there. And uh, I hope that you all would keep returning to the hive. We had a pretty good turnout today. So I'm really happy with the way things are going. And 
please everybody remember to be kind and take care and I will see you. I will be seeing you next weekend. Thank you.